welcome to today's Eucharist for the first Sunday after Trinity. As you can see in our sojourn round Gower, we've, we're on the beach today. We're on um, the beach near Pennard, which is not far from Gravesend, where history tells us a slave ship went down and the slaves were buried in the beach, reputedly still wearing their chains. We show strange hospitality sometimes, but when the, the people from foreign countries came here and were drowned, at least the people showed the hospitality of giving them a burial. Swansea's connection with slavery is a bit odd in that we would watch the locals would watch the slave ships going by on their way to Bristol. Yet the copper owners, the copper managers, played their part because the copper ingots made by the Vivians in their works in the lower Swansea Valley were sold on to the slavers to sell on to buy slaves in Africa. Copper was important, it was needed for decoration but was also needed for making pots. So in all this demonstrations going on around the world we have to remember that Swansea paid its part in the slave trade. Our readings today, the first one from Genesis, I alluded to that last week when I talked on Trinity Sunday about the hospitality of Abraham and then it is the wonderful words and Sarah laughed. Well, Sarah had every right to laugh. Three men she didn't know came to them. She provided hospitality for them and her husband. And they said, this woman who was mature in years would have a son. Our gospel reading from Matthew is about Jesus sending out the 12. And he says, as you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. Cast out demons. Well, at the moment, society is casting out its own demons, highlighting problems from the past. And people who were regarded as heroes at their time are now being seen in new light. And how will people see us in 200, 300 years' time? We won't be here to find out. And history will look on us differently than perhaps we feel we should be looked on. And so we took today, we begin our service. From our psalm, I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. My brothers and sisters in Christ, we meet in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray together. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, as we prepare to celebrate the presence of our Lord in word and sacrament, let us take a moment to call to mind and confess our sins. For all here present and those who ask of our prayers, Lord, have mercy. Lord have mercy. For our absent brothers and sisters, 
Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. For all the dead. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Almighty God have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. To him be glory forever, to him be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Glory to God, glory to God. Son of the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, Son of the Father. To Him be glory forever. To Him be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Glory to God, glory to God. Glory to the Spirit. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Spirit. To Him be glory forever. To Him be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. So now we turn to our readings for today. The Lord be with you. We pray today's collect. God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers and because through the weakness of our mortal nature we can do no good thing without you grant us the help of your grace that in the keeping of your commandments we may please you both in will and deed through jesus christ your son our lord who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit one god now and forever amen
first reading is from the book of Genesis. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre, as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent to embrace and meet them, and bowed down to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I find favour with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread, that you may refresh yourselves, and after that you may pass on, since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham hastened to the tent to Sarah, and said, Make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it, and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is your wife Sarah? And he said, There, in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age. It had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I have grown old and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time I will return to you, in due season, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. He said, Oh yes, you did laugh. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 116, verses 11 to 18. I believed that I should perish, for I was sorely troubled. And I said in my alarm, everyone is a liar. How shall I repay the Lord for all the benefits he has given to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfil my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful servants. O Lord, I am your servant, your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer to you a sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfil my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our epistle reading is taken from Romans, chapter 5, verses 1 to 8. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, 
because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God approves his love for us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Him. May the Lord be on your heart and on your lips as you joyfully proclaim his holy gospel in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Listen to the Holy Gospel according to Saint Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instruction. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of God has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey, or two tunics or sandals or a staff, for labourers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. 
If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me, as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly, I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. This is the Gospel of Christ. I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. Luke says the gospel that's set on the road, the gospel of action, of moving. Matthew's gospel is placed first in the, the canon of the New Testament. Not because it was written first but be because it is a gospel a preparation a gospel of climbing the mountain to the temple within the holy temple at the top of the mountain within each one of us When we read Matthew's Gospel, we need to understand that before Jesus sends out the Apostles into the outer world, he has taught them already to travel inside. to go to the dark places within. To find the demons, the sick, the dying, the dead, within. It is not by magic that the words of God come to us when we don't plan what we're going to say. The 
words come to us because we are tuned to the still small voice of God so that in any situation wherever we are under what all kinds of stress there may be the word of God may flow through us and we may speak not of our own imagination not of our own construction not of our own doctrines and patterns of thinking but to speak the living word So Jesus teaches his apostles, teaches us to climb that holy mountain to the holy temple within. We climb through practice, through coming in silent prayer to God in the morning, in the evening, throughout the day until as Paul tells us that we have to we are praying all the time praying without ceasing Praying without words for 20 minutes or so, two or three times a day, helps us to move beyond concept, beyond the imagination, beyond the programs of thought, to pray from the depths of our being. Pray from where Thomas Merton identifies the very roots of my life. The very roots of my being. During morning prayer this last week we have been using some words of Thomas Merton helping us to set our intention for the prayer during the week. In contemplative prayer it is necessary to let go of any semblance of being in control. It is more about unknowing, really, than knowing, unlearning the programs of our minds. Thomas Merton wrote this. My Lord God, I have no idea where I'm going. I do not see the road ahead of me. I cannot know for certain where it will end, nor do I really know myself. And the fact that I think I am following your will does not mean that I am actually doing so. But I believe that the desire to please you does in fact please you. And I hope I have that desire in all that I am doing. I hope that I will never do anything apart from that desire. And I know that if I do this, you will lead me by the right road, though I may know nothing about it. Therefore will I trust you always, though I may seem to be lost and in the shadow of death. I will not fear, 
for you are ever with me, and you will never leave me to face my perils alone. We are called to bring the gospel in this time to a frightened world. People living in fear all over the world. We can bring them the gospel without fear. We must climb the mountain. There are no plans to make. Simply the mountain to climb. The words will be given to you when the time comes. Notice your breath. As I breathe out, I let go anxiety. I breathe in the breath of God. Breathing out. I let go of my need to control. Breathing in, I breathe in wisdom. Breathing out, I let go. Breathing in, I receive God. You can practice like this anytime. Return to it anytime. When you do, you are in the holy temple, on the holy mountain. And you can take it with you, wherever you go, where you will need no extra sandals, no tunic, no bag, Take nothing for your journey. You have everything you need. Praying not with our lips and with our intellect and our imagination, but praying out of the very roots of our life and of our being. Amen.
faith which calls on us to show hospitality, to care for the sick, for the lost and the orphaned. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, and I believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet and right in our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who by his death has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory, praise and thanksgiving be unto thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, Creator and Sustainer of all things, Maker of humanity in thine own image who gave us thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. There he made the one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again. Therefore we beseech thee, O merciful Father, to sanctify with thy Holy Spirit these thy gifts of bread and wine, that we receiving them may according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, may be partakers of his most precious body. 
and blood. Who, uh, who in the same is. night that he was betrayed, took bread. Uh, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the redemption of all humanity. Drink in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and, and Heavenly Father, 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 making the more memorial of the blessed Passion and mighty Resurrection and glorious Ascension of thy dearly beloved Son, as he hath commanded us, rejoicing in his gift of the Holy Spirit, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory, we thy servants, with all thy holy people, do set forth before thy divine majesty this bread of eternal life, and this cup of everlasting salvation. And we beseech thee to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and to grant to us and thy whole church remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. We pray that all we who are partakers of this Holy Communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction and be numbered in the glorious company of thy saints. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, in whom, and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? We who are many are one bread, one body, we all share in the one bread. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. So, in communion with the worldwide Christian Church, we pray the great family prayer taught to us by Jesus himself. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is gracious, for his mercy endureth for ever. Almighty God, we thank thee for feeding us with the body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, through whom we offer to thee our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of thy spirit to live and work to thy praise and glory. Amen. The Lord be with you. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Our prayers be joined with those of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. David, St. Ceridian, St. Ilted, St. Gwenor, and all the saints. May the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy and protection of Almighty God rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. Amen.